Hello everyone, this is Luxtruck9 here, bringing you uh, a new creation. Um, I call it the Python Player Registry. Uh, it runs with a GUI using GUI 0. It, it connects with challenge, and it also has the ability to read and write to a Google spreadsheet. So for example, in this background, I have a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet. And here's the data that I'm going to be working with, and so far it's empty. Uh, right here on this main screen, I have a Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen display connected with a MeFair card reader, which is very specific. I'm using this because this is the ID card that my school uses, so it, it's more compatible with what we need to do. Uh, so right now here, I have a Python 3, and then it runs the program name. So I'm just going to hit enter on the keyboard I have down here. Hit enter. And now it'll uh, take a second to load up. And so something to note about this is it has the ability to add entries, meaning giving, given a ID, it can write the ID and then write given information. It, can also, it will also read this spreadsheet as well. Uh, so for example, because it's blank right now, so unfortunately the, it's hard for the GoPro to take cl a close look, but there are buttons here. Uh, the first button says add user to registry. So let's add a user to registry. Um, now, so the first thing it's going to ask you is your ID card number. Uh, now, oof, this focusing. Oh, can I do anything about this? Okay, I'll just leave it there. Um, anyway, so the ID card, you can use this RFID reader, which acts like a keyboard. And if I tap my card, boom, lays out the information into the program. Now, in the program, I could also add more data. So I'm going to use the keyboard that I have. You can't see it, but you'll see me typing. Uh, I could put my name, Lucky. And I could put my email. Oop. And then I would put in my challenge username, which is Luxtruck9, Discord username. Uh, I haven't got the Discord username working quite right. Oh, my keyboard disconnected. Let's see. Oh, there we go. And then I could enter my tags, uh, separated by a hash. So I would do luckstruck9, and then I have an alt name, so I'd put the hash in between that, and I'd say unlucky smack. Now, between your tags, you can have spaces. I use the delimiter as a hash. Um, if you, uh, the code will eventually be open source. You can change the delimiter. I use the hash because most, uh, that's probably the least frequent character, like unique character um, in like usernames and gamer tags. Uh, so, that's why I chose to use it. Although it will run into problems if someone tries to have a, uh, a username with a hash in it. So I can add this to player registry. So now what this is going to do is it's going to it make a new row and it's going to, with my ID card number, insert all my information. That's real cute, right? So let's go to main menu and now we could view individual stats. Um, I'm going to run this. Uh, by the way, once again, you can just tap your ID card. Uh, the slider has how many semesters you want to view. There's a slider here. Starts at one, goes to eight. Uh, so unfortunately, you won't be able to view like alumni and people who have graduated, but you can view the last four years of data. Um, right now, it's searching for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game name. So let me click refresh. While I'm doing refresh, I'm going to create a new tournament. Let's call this Test uh, 2020 Test Tournament. Meanwhile, this is searching through. It shows percent complete, and it shows through what tournament it's looking at. Uh, yada, yada, yada. This game will be, let's say it's ultimate. And double O-Lim, why not? Host a sign-up page. This is pretty important. Um, not going to worry about start time. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Oh, I have to worry about start time. Okay, so let's do... Friday, which is tomorrow at like 2 o'clock p.m., whatever, and we'll save this. Okay, so an update on the Raspberry Pi. It is now complete, and so now 
in lines of text. It'll show you in, in one, and so each uh, match entry is two lines. The first line will contain the tournament name as well as the round name. So I can look at Spring 2020, weekly number four, SSBU, winners round one. So I can view that piece of data. And then below it is the score. And it just shows what the scores of each player is. Okay, so that is the add user to registry. Let's view the edit entry. So now I can tap my ID card once again. It fills in that text field. I click submit. And then now here it will fill in the information from the Google spreadsheet that I put in. It'll fill in this information right here. Uh, I can, if I change any information, I can click edit player entry and it will uh, redo all of the Google spreadsheet uh, with the new entry. I could also choose to remove this player entry, which is pretty nice. So let's go back to the main menu. All right, sorry about that, folks. I had to cut, cut part of the video because I realized I entered my challenge username wrong. If you edit your challenge username wrong, nothing will go right. So let me tap my card again. Let me click submit. I need to edit my entry. And notice here, it's my challenge username. I did not put the nine. Oh my god, my keyboard's not lit for this Raspberry Pi. I can't see what I'm pressing. Oh. Okay. Whew, hard to press the nine, but I got it. So now I can click edit player entry. And now you will see the Google spreadsheet refresh. And now it has replaced my new challenge username, which is great. Because now we can go to return to main menu. We can go to sign up for bracket. And it takes a second to load because it reads through all the tournaments, checks what's open. So it shows us the available test tournament. We tap the ID card. We tap this. And now it's going to take a second to register. But now we can go back. And voila. Oh, wait, shoot. I need to expose this. And then voila. There is a user there now and it will show on the Raspberry Pi successful registration of Luxstruck9. It'll show your tag. Um, just so you know, it will always register the first tag in tags. So people should be putting their main tag as, as their first tag. Uh, and yeah, and I even got an invite on my phone. It says Chalonge, you've been invited to Chalonge, hello. Uh, you know, so that's how that works. And now, to make things interesting, we're going to show the report score. So I'm going to put sample, which is going to be a sample player. Uh, now for test purposes, we're not going to add more people. We're just going to start the tournament. Okay, so now that the tournament is started, I should be able to theoretically report a score. So I can go to report score. And once again, enter your ID number by tapping your card search for open matches and it'll take a second reads through challenge servers uh, something i have noticed is that challenge servers are occasionally pretty slow uh, however it came up so here we go the second button it says uh, it's hard to see on the gopro but it says 2020 test tournament against sample so it shows your opponent uh, does not show the round that is something i'm thinking about implementing in uh, future programs or future updates of this so anyway, let's click on this test tournament against sample. And in theory, pops up new window. And so now you enter the scores. Let's say I scored two and sample got two, two one. I'm choosing one because the zero is really hard for me to find right now on this keyboard that is not lit with no white text on the keys. OK, and so I click submit. All right, great. The score reported successfully, and you will note in the challenge window, it very automatically inputted the score. And it will take you back to uh, the window where you have to re-enter your ID to search for new matches, because if you finish that match, I mean, it needs to refresh the open matches, right? <laughs> okay, so now let me tap my ID card again. Let me search for open matches. All right, great. Um, so now we can, once again, it'll prompt us with the 2020 tournament against Sample. Uh, this time it's actually 
the final. So if I gave sample, let's make this as long lasting as possible. So it, it keeps the, the previous scores, which I'm thinking about fixing in another update. Let's say I got one and let's say sample got two. Oh shoot, sample got two. We can submit this and on challenge, it'll take a second and it will report the score. Pretty neato, huh? And then finally, we have one more match. Make sure you're focused in on that window. Tap your ID card, search for open matches. And then once again, it'll pop up the prompt. You click on it. Once again, 2020 test tournament against sample. And it'll, and then uh, scores are already one, two, except samples player one and I'm player two, because that's how challenge has it configured up here. So I can just click submit. Um, when I click submit, it's going to mean I win. I can win two, one. Um, and yeah, so it, it can successfully report. And so those are all the features uh, currently implemented into the Oberlin Smash player registry. This is version uh, 1.1. Do keep note of that as I will probably release uh, newer versions. But uh, something also cool is you can tap the logo on most devices and it should pull up uh, a web browser. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah, it, it's pulling it up. It's just doing it kind of slow because it's a Raspberry Pi. It pulls up the Oberlin Smash website, which you know we have all of our stuff offered on. Uh, but it just makes it really easy. Oops, I closed it. It makes it really easy to uh, conveniently have in one spot to deal with your bracket stuff and whatever you want to deal with. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching.